remember that group, we're gonna come back to that. Uh, Muslim Youth of North America, uh, many other groups, Islamic Education Department eventually turned into the Council for Islamic Education, but all these, these are just a small sampling of them. And what happened? They were all convicted. All five of those sent 20 plus years in prison. You send $12 million to Hamas, you're gonna to go to jail. It should have been a lot more than that. What happened? Influence operations. And we think Obama's bad, well, Right here, Egyptian. I know all you guys read Arabic, so. Well, good. Here, even the Egyptian paper identifies all these folks as Muslim Brotherhood. The Egyptians are doing it. They know it. This is a recent article. Names I'll bring attention to. Mohammed Elabiari, who's the second name up there. He's not highlighted right there. Yeah, Homeland Security. He's, he resigned from that. He's in Dallas now, back where he was. And he's bought his way into a nice conservative group in Irving, Texas, and is a member. And attends her meetings. And obviously, talking to people, telling them all about the nice things that Muslims do. Hmm. Wonderful guy. Here's another name. I'm going to come back to here in just a second. Ebo Patel. It's this gentleman on the far right over here. Remember that name. But the name I want you to see right here, real quick, Hassan, Shah Hassan. He's a special representative to the Organization of Islamic uh, Council. You've not heard that name, OIC. You heard of the UN? That's the second largest block or rep organization that represents countries in the world. 57 Arabic countries named the OIC. Remember the goof? It wasn't a goof, but it was a goof by Obama. So he said, I think I've been to all 57 states. Yeah. Yeah. 57 OIC states, countries. Kind of just got that mixed up in the brain cells. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is this guy and the OIC has major issues and we need to be aware of. We don't have time to talk about it today. Sorry about that. You can ask me later. Ah, our friend. Yeah, going back a little way. So it's not just Mr. Obama. And who is this gentleman? Very nice looking, very distinguished guy. Admiral Alamudi came from Eritrea and came here in 1979, became a naturalized citizen in 1985, got to know folks, started doing a nonprofit, actually started a nonprofit to help select chaplains. Oh my God. Was certified by the federal government because of his organizations to help choose chaplains in the military. And the man down here on the right, who knows that? Grover Norquist. That's conservative. Hey, he's a tax guy in California trying to save everybody some money on the property taxes. Good guy, yeah. He's been with the Islamists for years. And as a conservative, after Alan Moody saw that. There was not going to be a Democrat in the White House, but our friend started talking, hey, I'm going to introduce you to some friends of mine, the Bushes. And he became good friends with the Bushes. Now, that would have been okay, but in 2004, he just happened to be walking through Heathrow Airport with a suitcase full of $340,000 in which it was traced to a group that were trying to kill the Saudi prince. Not the way to get through customs. That's the kind of folks Al Moody is, the Muslim Brotherhood, and that's the kind of folks Robert Norquist was working with, and that's an influence operation. You don't stop smoking overnight. You don't get the kind of things that we see around us happening overnight. It takes influence. It takes money. It takes time, and they love time because we hate time. We're in a hurry. It's tomorrow. It's the next day. For us, it's next minute, next hour. That's way too long. Saad Kupta is a, uh, a leader, a thinker in the Muslim world. He was also a Muslim Student Association member in Colorado. Ooh, came back from America and said, boy, America's terrible. I'm going to write a book. And we talked about milestones. And every Muslim radical reads that. 
Jehovah is the non-Muslims. What life was like in uh, the Arabic world for all the non-Muslims? It was who they were. It was all the vile things. And this bridge is not to be built across it so that people on the two sides may mix with each other, but only so the people of Jehovah may come over to Islam. Well, brothers, let me tell you, they put that in all the visuals. And they know their symbology, and they know their dates. 1683, September 11th, Vienna didn't fall. They made sure that that date came back again. And right here, they put the bridge up there. Muslim public affairs, working with law enforcement. What? That looks pretty good. But to every Muslim who knows milestones, that's no bridge for them to you know, meet in the middle. They know exactly what they're doing. Education. We're going to talk about Angelo State. We're going to talk about this right here. On the left, Harvard. On the right, Georgetown. Looks pretty nice. Prince Ali bin Talal Islamic Studies program sounds very impressive until you realize Prince Ali bin Talal was a Wahhabi out of Saudi Arabia. They've given, and if you know anything about Islam, Wahhabis, Wahhabism is the most violent form of Islam out there. They've given over $20 million to this organization, $10 million to start up the organization, and fund it on a regular basis. Same name over there, they've got it at Georgetown. Who trains all the State Department folks? In Washington, D.C., I can tell you it's not a community college. It's Georgetown <laughs> University. But that's not all. This is about symbolism. A Muslim looks at this and says, hmm, that's a mosque. Is there anything higher in that building, in that picture, than the mosque? No. There's a reason for that. This side, there is the, what we would think would be pretty high up. There's the crescent right there. They do that for a reason, just to stick it in our eye when we're not thinking about it because we don't know what we're talking about. Shaping the minds. Governor Perry. Does this guy look like a Muslim? Aga Khan, the fourth. His father was the third. He was the fourth. Ismaili sect, very peaceful, but let me tell you, they believe in all five pillars of the Islam. They believe it in their heart and soul. But they're not known for killing people. Well, that's a good thing to put on your resume. But at the end of the day, you don't go sign education treaties and say we're going to send our teachers to go through a course and Aga Khan is going to give you because they're only going to give you the watered-down version of what Islam is all about. And I know of teachers who went through that course and said, I don't think you get the full story here. And sure enough, they weren't. 80 teachers, 15,000 students were trained. And then it got on the internet. And whoa, it didn't go well for them. So how did they fix that? It's all about Dawa, proselytizing. Well, the next time they did it, they didn't put it on the internet. <coughs> they made it very quiet. And they took, the student, they took the teachers over to Turkey to give them the training over there, instead of doing the training here. Well, if you're a local school teacher and you're getting a free trip to Turkey, whoa, you're going to sign up for that. And when you come back, you're going to be the top dog in the school because you've been to Turkey. And you're going to talk about the Middle East and you're going to talk about whatever they told you to talk about. Because that's what you think is the truth. And that's happening with schools, universities, all around. We just finished up a project where we reviewed 30, 37 social studies textbooks that are proposed for the state of Texas coming up. We found over 1,500 errors in the social studies textbook. Many of them related to Islam, but others not related to Islam. Did you know that we all live in a democracy, according to all the major publishers, until we pointed out to them, oh, by the way, excuse me, but it's a constitutional republic. And these were average citizens. 50 people changed what 5 million kids are going to study. So if you think, oh, I'm too old, because they look all like you guys. We're all old. But let's face it, 50 people got together and we did that. It was Truth in Texas Textbook was the, was the website. I'll give you that here in a second. But this is some of the examples. Beginning in the late hunt, this is about the Crusades. It's the bad guys. The Christians went in and killed all the Muslims. Ooh, that's terrible. Eh, not really. 
didn't really kind of tell the rest of the stories Paul Harvey would say. And we pointed it out to them. We sent it to the publishers. Sometimes they agreed, but a lot of times they pushed back. They had never had anyone kind of push back on. And we had folks just like you go up and testify and tell the state school board, this is what we found, this is all of our expert opinions who give you the facts, and we got some changes made. And people said, no, you're not going to be able to do that. But that's the narrative, and it's a half-truth. They like to say, oh, you just ask us to put more information. That's a request for additional information. No, if a half-truth is a half-truth, it's, it's not additional, it's not the truth. Do whatever semantics you want. Here's another example. Oh. I may have gone too fast. Uh, yeah, one more. Six day war made it sound like, holy cow, the Israelis were, you know, it was all their fault. Nothing going on around it. And yet, we pointed out to them 